while we wait to get through to the London Stock Exchange, let's look at what's happening in Angola. The central bank has, there has signed agreements with the International Monetary Fund to be provided with technical assistance to strengthen its banking supervision the prevention of money laundering and the illegal financing of militant groups. The central bank said the contracts will run for about two years and are aimed at restoring uh, credib credibility in the Angolan banking sector and re-establishing relations with international financial institutions. Well, it's a busy day at the London Stock Exchange as the Nigerian Banking and Investment Forum begins today. The LSE, in collaboration with the Nigerian Stock Exchange and, the, and in partnership with Afri Investors, putting this program together to discuss the Nigerian investment, investment landscape as well as focus on the opportunities within the banking sector. Our channel's television news editor and senior correspondent, Runke Raji, is attending this forum and joins me now from the London Stock Exchange. Good afternoon, Runke. Thank you very much for coming through to us. Good afternoon, Chimese. So tell me, what's the thrust of this event? Well, basically, we're bringing the Nigerian capital market down to London, which is the financial market of the world, as you know. Uh, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the, the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange is at this forum. We have uh, the central bank governor, uh, the governor of Edo State, and uh, a, few of, a few top bankers from Nigeria are also here. They're, they're here to meet with... Uh, financial investors, portfolio investors, and global financial advisors. The whole idea is to seek investors back into Nigeria, uh, given uh, what the government and what some of the present, uh, presenters have said are the giant strides that have been recorded in Nigeria in the last uh, couple of years. Okay, the central bank governor has just uh, presented his keynote address. Aside from talking about accommodating the small and medium enterprises into the market, what else did he say? The central bank governor was emphatic, and not just accommodating the SMEs. He says the Nigerian Stock Exchange just has to find a way of creating, of adjusting a straight pattern to ensure that SMEs are listed on the Nigerian market. And he gave a very classical example. I'll tell you the example he gave is that of the popular uh, transport taxa that we all use all over the world, the Uber service. Mr. Emefiele wondered if Uber has started in Nigeria, if those guys that's talking about Trans, Kalanik, and Garrett Camp would have had any chance at all that because nobody would have given them a chance, no stock exchange, in the developing country would have given the kind of support that those guys needed because they would have been considered, you know, as a company that is too small to be listed. So that's the example he gave. That So the Nigerian Stock Exchange has to come up with ways of encouraging very small indigenous companies that have, that have very good blueprints and are, that can show once they demonstrate that they can do good business, then they, they should get all the support that they can get from government, from the uh, Nigerian capital market as well. He also spoke about agriculture. You, of course, as you know, the CBN is deeply involved in this, um, the Anchor Borrowers Program. Mm -hmm. And he says what is driving that uh, program, basically, is the interest of the president. Because the president says, let's forget about all the talk about diversifying the economy. We've been talking about this for decades. Let's do something practical. And uh, so the, pre the president challenged uh, most members of his team, of his cabinet, uh, about uh, two years ago when he took them to Ben, ben Kirby in Kirby State, that we must do something about diversifying uh, the economy. And uh, agriculture uh, is what he says has been a good example of diversifying the Nigerian economy. Right. The, the 12th edition of the Banking Sector Report by Afri Invest is being unveiled today, and that is titled Nigeria Reopens for Business. Now, have you spoken to any of those foreign investors there? What do they think about doing business in Nigeria? Quite a number of them are, are at this forum, Chimese, I can tell you. And they're all concerned about what comes out of Nigeria in the next two years, in the next five years, in the next ten years. Right now, the immediate concern of most of these investors is that of stability. Yes, Nigeria has just come out of recession. 
how well are we going to be able to manage that? What's going to happen? You will, you were surprised. Not so many people are concerned about security now. They're talking about what what's going to happen to the elections. What if? So, so what are the chances of the candidates? I was surprised myself when that came up for discussion. That some of, that some are, uh, those are some of the factors that investors will be looking at. What candidates are the two political parties going to bring up in 2018 as their candidates for the elections? And what are the chances of those candidates driving or pushing further some of the reforms we are seeing in the economy right now? Okay, we have quite a number of um, government officials there. Aside from the CBN governor, we have quite a number of uh, government officials there. Were they able to allay some of these fears expressed by these investors? Oh, yes. Everybody has his or her own story. The Minister for Solid uh, uh, Minerals, Dr. Faimi, Dr. Kayo De Faimi, has been telling them the need for most of these investors to come into that sector, that the government has given quite a number of incentives to any investor. That is, that's talking about the tax holiday that mm -hmm. the federal government introduced some time ago. And, you know, reeling out some of the uh, incentives that has been given to encourage a lot of investors to come into that sector. The Edo State Governor also spoke about agriculture, uh, talking about uh, some of the opportunities in his uh, state for investors to come in and take advantage of. Now, from your perspective, Ronke, how apt is this forum at this time? I think uh, it couldn't have come at a better time, really, if you ask me, because especially now that, you know, the, the story has been a full one for 2017, from going into recession, from coming out of recession, even though we're told this is still a grad, I mean, a fragile, the economy is still fragile. So it's a very good time for investors to rearrange their portfolios, to find out, okay, where and where do we want to put our money? What is going on in Nigeria? Perhaps, you know, we could take a look at what is going on there. Is it a viable? And then don't forget, before the banking sector, the, before the crisis in the, about that happened about five years ago, we have quite a number of portfolio investors, especially in the capital market that invested in Nigerian banks. But because of that crisis, quite a lot of them moved out their funds. Now they're ready to come back and they need to be assured that they're not just bringing in their money, you know, into uh, an environment that is uh, still volatile. They need to, they need reassurance. And that's what I think the government officials that are present at this event are giving to the investors. The, the discussion go, goes on. We're still, uh, right now, there's a session going on. Okay. And so at the end of the day, we'll be able to feel their pulse, find out just exactly what their mindset will be. But from those I've spoken with so far, everyone seems to think that Nigeria is really ready for business. Right. Thank you very much, um, Arunke. We expect those updates from you. Thank you for your time. Well, that's a wrap on today's edition of the program. Thank you very much for being part of it. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.